Are there any other votes? Announce the results. Ayes 77, noes 40. The bill is passed. Mr. Morelli. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Speaker. If we could uh, take up calendar number 771 on page 79 by Mr. Kavanaugh. Clerk will read. Assembly 5567, calendar 771, Mr. Kavanaugh, an act to amend the administrative code of the City of New York. An explanation is requested, Mr. Kavanaugh. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, this bill would repeal uh, what is sometimes called uh, the vacancy bonus and sometimes called the eviction bonus uh, from the rent stabilization law. That's a, that's a provision in current law that allows the landlord to increase the legal rent 20% upon each uh, vacancy uh, with one limitation that the vacancy has to occur uh, no more than once a year to get the bonus. Mr. Fitzpatrick. Or yield for a couple of questions. Will you yield, Mr. Kavanaugh? Yes, Mr. Thank you, Mr. One Mr. minute Speaker. while we uh, try and Thank quiet you. down the House so we can hear this. Shh. Please, sir, proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Brian. Uh, you describe it as a vacancy bonus, Brian. I, I like that, uh, uh, that terminology because these apartments, even some that are renting for as little as $300 a month at very, very low levels, the bonus has been granted not to the landlord but to the tenant uh, for a number of years. That's one of the problems with rent control and rent stabilization uh, in theory is that you are depressing rent levels and I understand the argument about the so-called housing crisis, but when, a part, when an apartment is vacated, uh, when you look at the cost of real property taxes, water, sewer, and the fact that that rent has been kept artificially low for a very long period of time in many cases, the ability to recover just a piece of that in terms of a 20 percent increase upon vacancy I do not think is unreasonable. Uh, and after all, much of the housing stock predates World War II and is in desperate need of constant care and attention. Uh, what you're doing here is, I think, unfair, unreasonable. Uh, and calling it a bonus, quite frankly, I think, is, is just not fair, not right, even insulting. I'm curious uh, to, the, to, the, to the property owner. To, you know, at some point, Mr. Fitzpatrick, my I'm friend. sorry. Go ahead, Brian. I'm curious if this is going to evolve into a question at some point. Yes, it is a question. But why, you know, what is, what is unfair about a 20 percent increase on an apartment when vacated that rented for just a few hundred dollars a month when you know the costs involved in maintaining a building? Okay. Well, first of all, uh, you, uh, you're, you're saying you're talking about both rent controlled and rent stabilized well, apartments. Rent stabilized. Rent As stabilized. you probably know, rent controlled apartments, when they become vacant, can switch into the rent stabilization program, Correct. which is a very different program. So people in rent controlled apartments do not, uh, the, the vacancy bonus issue is really an issue for rent stabilization. As, I, as you also know, there are virtually no rent stabilized apartments that rent for $300 a month at this point in, in New York City. Uh, they're very substantially higher than that, uh, almost across the board. Um, this bonus uh, has se there are several problems with this bonus. First of all, a recent study by the Community Service Society indicated that half of all increases in rent throughout the city of New York result from the vacancy bonus. They did a statistical analysis of the various factors, of which there are many, that allow rents to go up in New York. And they found the vacancy bonus to be the single most significant one, and again, result, resulting in half of all the increases across the housing stock of two and a half million people. Uh, secondly, as you know, the rent stabilization law has many provisions that allow landlords to have the resources to uh, preserve their buildings, to maintain their buildings. In fact, the Rent Guidelines Board makes a decision each year about how much rent, how much the rent should go up in order to cover any increasing costs in maintaining housing. 
Um, in addition, as you know, there are provisions, some of which we're going to be discussing today, which allow landlords to cover the costs of capital improvements, allow them to cover the costs of individual improvements and apartments, and also allow them to ensure that they maintain a profit on the building. So there's no landlord in New York that ought to be not, ought to be failing to make a profit in order to maintain their buildings under the current law. This provision, which arbitrarily assigns a 20% increase each time the apartment becomes vacant, is basically a method to very rapidly escalate the rent toward the point where it can be deregulated or toward the point where it's unaffordable to people that this program is intended to protect. Um, it, it does, in fact, uh, encourage landlords to engage in very bad behavior to remove people uh, from apartments. We've had several landlords that have been indicted recently in New York because of be bad behavior, significantly incentivized by the existence of the vacancy bonus. So again, we think this is a, this is a totally unnecessary uh, provision. It is based on the sorts of rationale that you were talking about that you know these things have been existed forever, they're very old, and they need this extra bonus. But that is simply not, a fa that is simply not the reality of the current uh, real estate market in New York. Well, I would, uh, I would, in certain buildings, you may be correct in that, in that regard, but not in all of them. And in fact, I think in many of them, especially those buildings that predate World War II, uh, I would disagree with you there. I'm but, sorry, I, I just, you're disagreeing that there's an MCI program to do capital improvements, or there's an IAI program to deal with individual improvements, or that the Rent Guideline Board... No, I don't, I don't uh, disagree at all, but the problem right. is, Brian, uh, under rent stabilization, these rents are kept artificially low, and we know we have many tenants who could easily afford a market a market rate. The median, uh, the median that's, income of that's, tenants. That's immaterial, but the median income of tenants uh, benefiting from rent regulation in New York State is, in New York City is about forty thousand dollars. These are not wealthy people. This is not a program that deals with wealthy people. We also have a program that's been in place a long time mm -hmm. to remove uh, rent regulation for families making substantially more than that. So this is, again, that, that, is, that may be you're, something that's true. You're absolutely years, right. Not true right now. You're absolutely right. I don't dispute any of the facts and figures you throw out, but you can also not deny the fact that we have housing stock that is very old. We have housing stock that is in need of improvement on a regular basis. And we have escalating costs like real property taxes as well as water and sewer rates. And we had a rent guidelines board that just issued recently a 0% rate increase. And we have, a rent, we have a rent guideline board that has raised the rent over a period of many years at a rate faster than the cost of, uh, than the cost of living in New York, at a rate faster than the growth of income among uh, working families in New York, and at a rate faster than the actual apparent costs of maintaining buildings. According but again, that is the if you want to talk about whether the rent guideline board is doing its job properly, that's fair. To say that the solution to that is to provide an arbitrary 20% increase once a year on an apartment that may or may not be meet this hardship that you're claiming exists mm -hmm. is just not a rational, reasonable well, way. Often? And again, we know that some of the worst landlords in New York City are taking advantage of this and creating conditions in buildings in order to get their tenants out of the buildings because they make money under this program when they succeed in evicting people. I understand. I understand what you're saying. The, but how often does that happen? When you say, uh, you know, once a year, how how often do you have proof that that's happening? I can I can give you the names if I rather not mention the names of some of the uh, criminals and other malfeasance in my district that own buildings. But some of them have been in the papers and have been indicted recently. Um, this is not an unusual thing. We have landlords whose business model is to systematically prey on tenants. And one of the principal mechanisms for their doing that is to try to get an eviction so they can raise the rent dramatically. And again, if, if you want to talk about how we should change the rules so we have a rational system of addressing the needs for landlords to uh, maintain their buildings, that might be a reasonable conversation. I have a feeling we're going to having that conversation shortly when we talk about uh, the next bill I'm proposing today, which is about major capital improvement. But right. this is an arbitrary bonus that goes that a landlord can get once a year that raises the legal rent 20 percent which compounds over years basically very quickly allows them to remove the, the apartment from rent regulation and it's unnecessary and arbitrary and as you know this bill proposes to eliminate it very good thank you brian thank you uh, mr speaker on the bill on uh, the bill mr fitzpatrick the, the, the sponsor raises a very legitimate issue about the behavior of some building owners and landlords 
but that does not apply to everyone across the board. And painting with a broad brush, uh, I think, is not helpful in making the case. But what happens here is you have, you have buildings that are old. Uh, you have needs that continue to, uh, that need to be met. You have costs that continue to escalate. You have taxes and water charges and sewer charges that keep going up. So when a vacancy occurs, and vacancies don't happen that often because of rent stabilization, you have artificially low rents. So there's a tendency not to want to move. Uh, so I question how often this really does happen. I don't argue with the fact that there are some bad apples out there that are trying to make this happen. And that should be prosecuted, and it is. But when a vacancy occurs, the rules allow a 20% increase. The housing stock needs to be kept up. It's for the benefit of all tenants and prospective tenants alike. I would encourage, encourage a no vote on this legislation because I do not believe it is necessary. There's nothing broken here. You don't need to fix what's not broken. Thank you. Read the last section. This act shall take effect immediately. Clerk will record the vote. <laughs> Mr. Rivera, to explain his vote. Yes, very quickly, less than two minutes, maybe a couple of seconds. Uh, I'm going to vote yes, and I want to comment uh, uh, the sponsor of this bill, uh, but I would like to ask Ms. Fitz, Mr. Fitzpatrick for a list of uh, Mr. those housing Mr. that have Rivera. a permit for $300 a month rent because maybe I'll be able to afford it with my pension that I will be getting if I ever decide to retire. The fact of the matter is, my friend, is that in the district that I represent, a family of four working, each one of them puts monthly $300 in order to pay $1,300 rent. There is no $300 rent anywhere in the borough of the Bronx. I don't know where we or you get those figures from. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, 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 I vote yes. Certainly, and we will refrain from asking questions when we explain our votes. Thank you.
Are there any other votes? Announce the results. Ayes 76, noes 41. The bill is passed. Mr. Morelli. Yes, thank you, sir. If we could go to Rules Report 140 on page 10 of the main calendar by Ms. Hindman. Clerk will read. Assembly 9598, Rules Report Number 40, Ms. Hindman, an act relating to the establishment of a pilot program. Read the last section. This act shall take effect immediately. Clerk will record the vote. photographer's picture. Are there any other votes? Announce the results. Ayes 100, noes 0. Congratulations, Ms. Hyman, on that first bill. <laughs> Mr. Morelli. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, in uh, Ms. Schimmel's absence, let me announce there will be a Democratic conference in the Speaker's conference room immediately, and uh, the House will stand at ease until the conclusion of party conference. Democratic conference in the Speaker's conference room. The House will stand at ease.